a mouth for babies. What is it that you want to do? I want to shave other. I want to shave OG. I want to shave other people because I want to shave God. Oh, you do. That's amazing. Give me a high five. Serving God comes with so many rewards, don't it? Yeah, it comes for so many people. This is Michael's first time going to the drive-in, so this should be an experience. Another off-the-fly trip, y'all. This is something I prayed about. Like, I always wanted someone that was adventurous. And that's it's not exclusive. <laughs> exactly. I gotta show y'all how I find things on the dime. Because like how. Uh, everybody hates Chris. The mom always wanted to spend money, but the dad was the one penny pinching. <laughs> nah, it's two Julius is living in this house. The time for everything, you know what I mean? Like, we went such a long time not doing too many things outside the home. Then, of course, because of COVID, but I mean, it's the summertime, it just makes sense. No, my dad made a joke, and I don't think he—I don't think he truly understood how deep his joke actually was. Look at him! Look at him! It's like he's. But anyway, the joke went like this: People be driving on the road, and you got these little angels and devils on your shoulders, even though that's not real according to how TV portrays it. It's real because you have spirits in your ear, or spirits suggesting because the way of man is not in himself so the joke is like you got people driving around dude cut some cut somebody off and a little de demon is on the shoulder yeah man you should go up there you should go up there and cut him off cut him off cut him back off <coughs> and then next one it's like this is a random random scenarios and then the next one's like yeah you should uh you should just swerve in out of this lane trying to speed up and get past this person whatever whatever it's like just random stuff mm -hmm. and then it gets to this last person when that he brings up and he's like this demon on his shoulder is just like uh, just do something stupid and i'll be seeing that on the road and not like every uh -huh. time i see it i'll be like i think of that joke because it's truth in jokes yeah and I, that's why I, say, I don't think my dad understands how deep that was because that really be how i be sometimes and it's sad but it's one day, one day I'll be able to see it though, because y'all, I do be sitting back here probably sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's like I drive y'all, but like I'm not a long distance driver. Like I drove to Michigan. I could drove from um, Charlotte to Michigan, Ohio to Charlotte, and it's, it, it was the Lord. Okay, it was the Lord. I just don't care for driving. Like I know how to when I need to, but I don't like to. So I'm glad you picked up the slack in that category. <laughs> the Lord's given me a lot of, what's the word I'm looking for? Endurance. Speaking in tongues or you know, coveting gifts and stuff like that. And once so, again, I'm not speaking verbatim, yeah. but you know. So like, when it comes to, um, you know, vainglory, like what does vainglory look like? Vainglory. Because I feel like a lot of people don't know Everybody's what vain, yeah. I feel like a lot of people don't know what vain glory looks like. It's like, oh, I'm doing this for God, but it's like all eyes are on you. Like, why well, we gotta know, know your name? You don't know like, if somebody's truly doing something for God because you can sit there and say you're doing something for God, <laughs> but you yourself even know your flesh will push you to do something to give you satisfaction because if what you're doing requires sacrifice mm -hmm. there might still be some satisfaction that comes from it in some sort of fashion right. but if there is not sacrifice behind it and if there is not a message that needs to be taken away that you yourself can even learn while you're in the midst of doing what you're doing mm -hmm. then it's probably vain glory because as we walk this walk, we're supposed to be, what's the word? 
presenting ourselves, presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice. Right. God, which is our reasonable service. It says it's our reasonable service, which means because of what Christ did for us, you shouldn't have any problem doing this at all. Exactly. But because of our flesh and because of our own desires and our own lusts that we have, that we need to fight against, which is why Paul talks about dying to the flesh, crucifying the flesh, and all of that. Those things can creep in as we're claiming that we're doing something for Christ. Mm -hmm. Like, I even myself was, as I was learning the word, and because Lydia told me something when she brought me to, to the church. Mm -hmm. She was like, yeah, just be careful, Mike. Like, as soon as I got the word, the first day that I went there, I was like, this is it. This is what I've been <laughs> looking for. And I was like, what? Like, I was like, I was so excited, man. I couldn't even, like, yeah. <coughs> I'm smiling just thinking about it right now because that's how big of a smile that I had on my face. Oh, yeah. But as I was learning, I, w I, w I wasn't stopping. I just kept going, kept going, kept going, kept going. Lydia was like, be careful that you don't get Bible burnout. I know, that's I'm like, right. I'm like, what's Bible burnout? And she said, it's when you study too much and then you just get tired and you, you feel like you can't take no more. And I, to this day, I've never gotten that. Yeah, but I had that feeling. I had that feeling before. It was hard getting back up, but I got back up. No, Because I was ready. It was when Obama was in office, and they was talking about martial law and stuff like that. Oh. And I was on some <laughs> repent or die. And then I was like, okay, we still got a lot of time to go. But I was just thankful. You know, all the people I witnessed to, but I was definitely sheep root in. I done humbled myself a lot. But yeah, so I would be studying and studying. And because of that, and also because James 1, if you lack wisdom, ask the Lord and he'll give it to you liberally. So I'll pray, ask for wisdom, not to understand it. Ask for wisdom, not to understand it. And as I was getting it, it would be so filling and so like, you get so much, so zealous at the same time. Like everybody needs to know this type of feeling. Like, like it was a truly another form that I had no idea about because I was trying to be the one to say, Lord, I brought this person this understanding, yeah. or I was the one that changed this person's heart to make them want to follow you, Lord. Like, yeah. that's what I that, that was a scary feeling. Once the Lord dropped that on me, <coughs> it made me understand that. I was like, Oh my god, no, I get that because yeah. that's that, and that's another form of that vain glory. Like it creeps up on you. You want to be our, the one, our you know. Flesh, our flesh is so deceptive. Our carnal yeah. minds are so deceptive because it's constantly striving against God. It's, what's the word? It's an enmity against enmity. God. Yeah. Which is it's a complete opposition. Mm -hmm. So as you're, as I was trying to teach them, I was also trying to get that glory mm -hmm. of being, I'm the one that did this. I told my And then what this, changes all of that? Came. What changes all of that is that we understand that we plant the seed oh, yeah. and God supplies the yeah. increase. And you just got to give it time. Think about it. I came to God when I was, no, I knew about God, but I didn't take him serious. I took my walk serious when I was about 21, 22. And it's just, imagine how many years that was. It's like just knowing God. I know God. I no, know, I ain't going to say I know God. I knew of God you know what I mean I was just playing the part I just did what I grew up in but eventually he's he will knock you know and you gotta open up be ready be ready to receive and that's where you get humbled you know that's where that vain glory kind of diminishes because it's like okay I need God like I can't do nothing by myself you know yeah it's like even at that point with me, I still feel it every now and then. Cause this is an in, you gotta endure to the end. And we can't ever feel like, okay, I've overcome this. You're now always I'm, overcoming. Now I'm good, I'm good, I'm, I'm straight. But you can't think like Endure to the end, to the it's end. Always gonna Something can happen the next second, tomorrow. Right. You know, we're trying every waking moment, we're merciful. We have to show compassion, you know, and when you show compassion, I just feel like you really allow God to work through you because you got to think about how you was before this walk. Like, 
nobody in this walk is perfect like you you got to let go of certain what is it standards of people and how they should be you know or, or how they should look to set yourself as the standard and yeah everybody match you. yeah and that's not because that's not how that nobody's works the standard but Jesus. and we all are unique you know shout out to uh sister Dacia. um the zoom call that we had it was amazing you know um sister sheila she just touched on you know just like how all of us are just unique you know what i mean and it's like nobody is the same but we all serve the same purpose you know we should all be serving the same purpose which is to serve god in spirit and the truth you know um truly try, striving to be on one accord and sometimes some of us gonna take the bullet you know what i mean like right now it might be a season of like michael was just saying just being slow to speak well really that's not even a season you should always kind of be slow to speak but just looking to see where where we can fill in the gaps you know what i mean like always put yourself in a position to better the situation not be a part of the situation but better the situation you could do that through praying all sorts of things praying fasting but on that note that was just um a little what you want to call it meditating on the word so we're almost at the drive-in and we will tune back in so hopefully that was a blessed word in jesus name your nap was it good? Was it good? You like giving high fives, don't you? You was just drooling away. Yes, you would. Is that it? Oh, that was it! Ah! Hey, let me get one. But it's different movies, though. Everybody not watching the same thing. I can't even Everybody get in that lane over there is turning into the theater. <laughs> <laughs> Because Doctor Strange is about to start early to get a good spot. It's like going to the movie theater to get a good seat. Oh, yeah, that part. Now, that part definitely matters. 27 dollars per vehicle. Jesus, where's my wallet? Number three. <laughs> Say lights out, turn your lights on. Drivers. This when you um park, babe. Huh? This when you park. Lights oh. out. <laughs> oh that's a screen. You're gonna get close. Oh yeah. See we did get a good seat. If you go over there. Oh, it's one. It's a whole row up front. Those little, few little slots. I think it's at 107.1. Because the guy is talking right now. It's 97.9. 97.9? How you know? I mean, 87.9. It's right there in front of you. <laughs> the show starts in 10 minutes. <laughs> Bring chairs next time. Yeah. Look, baby, girl. Isn't that awesome? The show starts in five minutes.
something. Yeah. All right, now you're licking the steering wheel. Oh no, Zeb. I saw that. Watch the movie. <laughs> <laughs>